And ANOVA is part of this class of things that we're going to do in the next chunk of the course called the general linear model. And, um, and so this concept kind of applies to ANOVA and regression and correlation, our next two topics. So I'm going to take a second here and erase the board, and then I'm going to translate this more directly into what we do with ANOVA. In ANOVA, we don't have continuous uh, independent variables. We have categorical ones. So let's think about an example that's like that, and it'll help us understand what we're going to do. Okay? So our dependent variable in ANOVA is uh, interval or ratio, but our independent variable are groups. Okay? So let's suppose that we're back to IQ again. We're just so obsessed with IQ in this course. Uh, but, and I'm going to go back to our bell curve uh, example we were talking about uh, in a previous, uh, previous section here. And I'm going to have three race groups, though. Okay, So let's say I have uh, black, uh, white, and Hispanic. Okay, All right, so I go out and I sample a bunch of people. I make them take IQ tests. Okay, So I have all their scores. This is, this is everybody, the total group. And so you know, I have all their IQ scores in here. That's everybody. But now I want to break those up into groups to do my analysis of variance. So some of these people are black, some are white, and some of them are Hispanic. And so I want to take those out and see what they look like. Okay, so maybe it's something like this. I don't know. Okay, so those are the black people from here. These are the white people. I'm just making this up. This has no empirical meaning or value whatsoever. Okay, all right. All right, so, suppose, so now I've split up my data into three groups, okay? And, you know, as, as uh, the author of the bell curve, Murray, would suggest, okay, so there's going to be differences. So let me calculate the mean for each one of these. So there's the mean for uh, blacks on IQ. Here's the mean for whites. All right, now that doesn't mean there's actual intelligence differences between people. Those are IQ scores. You've got to remember what you're doing here. This is not... This IQ is not a direct measure of intelligence, okay? But anyhow, so we can see this kind of relationship between IQ scores, okay? Now, there's two kinds of variation in this data, okay? There's the variation within each group, okay? So I have variation from the Hispanic mean. I have, I have that, uh, the, all those differences of those scores from the mean within the Hispanic group. That's an important term, within Okay, and same thing with whites. I have variation within the white group and variation within the black group. Okay, and then I have variation between the groups. Okay, so that's the difference between blacks, whites, and Hispanics, and that's sort of represented by these lines I drew here. So there's variation. If I took the overall mean, whites would be above it and blacks would be below it, and that variation is the variation between groups, the variation between groups. And that's what helps us compare the categories, the variation between groups, okay? The total variation that I would have over here, if I calculated the overall mean in here, okay, and calculated all of those differences from the mean, that would add up to the variation within plus the variation between. Those things added up together give me the total variation, okay? Um, so that's an important thing to keep in mind here. And we're going uh, we're, we're to um, go through and compare those in the end. That's what ANOVA is going to do. We're going to compare the between with the within. How do we uh, decide if there's a relationship between race and IQ in this example? Well, if the within variation is really high, that's just a bunch of random noise, right? That's just a, that's, that, that total variation is just due to a bunch of factors and random stuff that we don't know what it is. We don't know why there's all this variation within Hispanic or this variation within whites or this variation within blacks, all right? This model doesn't tell us that. It only tells us about the groups, right? So if there's a lot of that, then we don't know much. On the other hand, if the between variation is really high, then, then if that's the source of the differences of the, of, the, of the overall differences, of the overall variation, if that's the source of it, then that means 
that there's something actually going on. There's actually a difference between the groups, okay? So comparing that between with that within is really important to kind of trying to understand what's happening, okay? So the total variation is something that we call sum of squares, sum of squares. And we, this should be an old friend to you. You know sum of squares. You've heard it many, many, many times, okay? Um, and, but it's really not sum of squares. That's just what people call it um, for short. It's really the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. The sum of the squared deviations from the mean. Boy, that should sound familiar to you. We've done that a lot of times. So this is the total variation. Ta-da! You've seen that a lot already. I'm taking, I'm subtracting the mean from each of my observations from, from one to all of them. So I'm taking all of my observations and su subtracting the mean from them, and then I'm squaring that. We've done that lots of times. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do essentially, uh, since this is my total variation, I'm going to figure out how to break that up into two parts. Into the between group variation and the within group variation, and then I'm going to compare them. That's all I'm going to do. All right. It's very simple. Um, and then that comparison is going to help me know whether this difference is really means much or if it's just part of the big noise of everything that's going on um, with the within group variation. I'm going to figure out what the sum, so I'm going to partition this sum of squares into two pieces, the sum of squares between and the sum of squares within, okay? And then I'm going to divide them by their degrees of freedom. So we've talked about degrees of freedom a number of times here. So I've got my degrees of freedom between and my degrees of freedom within, and I'm going to tell you how to get to those in just a second. And then I'm going to divide those, okay? So I'm basically going to take this between thing, just using real language here for a second, this between thing, and I'm going to divide it by the within thing. And that's going to give me something that's called F. And F is a very important statistic in this chunk of the course. All right, but it's just like anything else. It's just a number that we're going to find some critical value of and decide whether or not we beat the critical F and if, whether there's a significant difference or not. Okay? But I just want you to make sure you're following the concept here. So I'm comparing these two by dividing them. If the between um, uh, and the within are the same, then F is going to be 1, right? Because the number on the top is going to be the same as the number on the bottom. If the between is relatively high, which is what I expect to happen if there's actually a relationship between these variables. If I think that race actually predicts IQ, I would expect between to be high relative to within. And so F will be over 1.0. If between is really low compared to within, then this will be less than 1.0. It will be a little fraction, okay? Because this part will be smaller than what's on the bottom. It will be a fraction. Whenever F is below 1.0, you know there's no relationship. It's not going to happen, okay? Uh, but if, um, if it's over 1.0, there might be something there. It's got to be a certain size. You know, just being over 1.0 doesn't get you there. But um, we'll, then we'll, if it's over 1.0, then we'll go to the table and take a look to figure out whether it really is or not. Okay? But the idea is if between is high, meaning these groups, the difference between the groups means something relative to the, what's going on inside the groups, then we've got something. And that's what ANOVA is all about.